Wow. No, okay, so we've reacted to uh, this person before. I believe they're the ones that did... Um, what was it? It was the Jesus video games one. Where they played all those Jesus video games. It was fucking wild. Yeah, this is their latest one for horror games. And I figured, you know, kind of missed October entirely. So we'll watch this one. I haven't watched it yet. So here we go. The scary world of viral YouTube horror games. Chris. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first off, we just started. We're we're not even twenty seconds in. It's great. Um has anyone else been seeing these videos of people doing this shit um, on like all the platforms like YouTube, TikTok, where they're literally just running through the woods in the dark with like fake ass sirens in the background acting like their, their ass is about to get like fucking murdered. Like I, I saw it start in like mid-October where they're just doing this randomly. And it, you haven't seen it? Oh my god, they keep popping up on like my recommended pages on a bunch of my socials, which I barely go on anymore, but that's besides the point. Algorithm. Okay, wait a minute. I don't even want to see your algorithm, alright, Phoenix? <laughs> I don't want to see this, see the kind of things you've been seeing on it. I don't. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Excuse me, sir. I've dropped myself in this forest. Can you help me find me? <laughs> Can you help me find me? The doctor told me that I couldn't <laughs> survive. But that doesn't matter because right now it's Halloween. Which, by the way, hold on. He says that. But this was posted three days ago on November 1st. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Although, to be fair, that's kind of a staple for these kind of videos for like Halloween they usually come out the day after or something I'm really excited can't you tell <laughs> it does mean though that I need to decorate a little bit to get in the mood and I also need a really scary costume I've got it Hi, I'm Kyle Emerica <laughs> and I drive a Chevrolet a Chevrolet Wow. I'm scary now. Today, I wanted to talk about that horror That is horrific. Games. Obviously. But specifically, a subcategory of them that I find fascinating. Viral horror. So far, that was, that was the worst of the jump scares. That almost gave me a heart attack. I don't know about you guys. Horror games. I mean, yeah, you can distinguish any game as viral in multiple ways. It could be viral in the sense of everybody talking about it back when it came out, like the original Resident Evil. It could be viral in the sense of it being about a virus, like the original Resident Evil. Or it could be viral in the sense of it spreading everywhere and killing everyone in its wake, like that copy of Madagascar on the GameCube that I filled with arsenic. At the advent of the Jesus internet video Christ. becoming mainstream, though, games started going viral in a different way. No longer did you need to spend all of your money on something everybody was talking about to see what the hype was. Now you could go to YouTube and watch a strange hairy virgin scream at a little girl in First Encounter Assault Recon. <laughs> when I was a kid, my first experience of Doom 3 wasn't from playing it, it was from watching people go I do not like that sound. Ah, scary sound! On YouTube, you know, just like that viral web comic about sound. that ghost woman looking for her baby with that terrifying I actually played uh, Doom 3 
by myself for the first time. I was actually pretty excited about it because I hadn't played Doom in like forever. And it was so different from what the originals were that it actually scared the shit out of me. Like I, the first time I tried to play it, you know me, I'm a giant chicken. I lasted for like the first 30 minutes and then afterward I just, I turned my whole console off and I just, I went back to watching Cartoon Network. I wasn't having it. Haven't played a Doom ever. Phoenix. Phoenix. I'm taking your gamer card away from you. Jump scare ending. I remember these. <laughs> I wanted to spend a few minutes today trying to figure out why, in around 2010 to 2014, a few specific horror games blew up on YouTube like never before, and why there hasn't been a resurgence quite like it since. The horror games that went viral on classic YouTube before every other indie dev tried to replicate There's the, the success of them after 2014. It peaked here for some reason, and I want to find out why, because I deserve it. Speaking of that, I'm afraid I do need to get serious for a second, because I need to talk to you all about something, briefly, very near and dear to my heart. For this video, I'm working with a charity who are dedicated to finding out if MatPat ever responded to the Hello Neighbor Twitter account. For just <laughs> 3,000 pounds per month, you can help support the Matention Patention Foundation to give Hello Neighbor <laughs> and every other indie game Twitter account the resources that they need to help get the attention of MatPat. The begging <laughs> has to stop, and we have to work together to make that happen for all of the poor indie games out there in Africa. I mean, on Twitter. Whoa. Please call post 71 and give what you can today. <laughs> Thank you. So as a just heads up, there'll be no poppy playtime, no basic bold man, no layers of cake, no doki doki layers of cake. I am looking at games that probably owe all of their viral popularity solely because of online videos that were made during this specific time period. So come with me on a trip down memory lane as we rediscover the viral horror games of classic YouTube. <laughs> that's great perfection beautiful bloody i wish i could forget that you go if only i had i missed you too thank you for subbing alzheimer's wait no no that's not what Amnesia alzheimer's the is a first person survival horror stealth puzzle large big mac meal with carrot sticks that came out in 2010 and is the first thing that i think of whenever i think viral horror game there thank you for resubbing you go i missed you guys too i know i know it's been forever <sighs> were probably more popular scary games before this, but I don't care. Straight away, the game lives up to its namesake because the main character doesn't remember what his own name is. What have I done? Don't forget, some things mustn't be forgotten. So in that case, my name is Rethethef. And let me tell you, <laughs> this game is scary. And if you don't like strawberry jam, windy doors, and men that can't walk straight, this will be too much for you. That's what you're doing for most of the start of the game, honestly. Following spilled ice cream, avoiding doors blowing off everywhere, and falling over. And you begin to wonder what the big deal with Annie is the game and the disorder because I mean you only forget a few little things like your shopping list or your wife but don't worry because there's a very nice old fruitcake telling you all the backstory you need as you go through the game and your memories start coming back to you what did you call it the inner sanctum yeah I've been okay besides the usual you know real life getting in the way but that's it that's it and yeah this video just came out a couple of days ago I figured we'd watch it you know, because I think the only other video we've watched on here of him was the Jeebus one, so. <laughs> My most precious chamber, Daniel. And considering everything else what, you'll Phoenix? see in this castle, what? he really is the nicest man in the world that only wants to help you. But like I always say about the nicest people, do you know what an anagram of nicest is? <laughs> Incest. Oh my god. S so... <laughs> and you'll quickly find out why. There's skulls in the cupboard, there's an ele- Okay, 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 gotta pause the answer. Who am I fucking immediately- Okay, uh... I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. Okay. There's too many options. Also, I had to pause my playthrough 
because of that big ass patch where I had to leave my PC running overnight. Like, I don't know what the fuck Steam was doing with me, messing with me about that. You should be judging me based on it. Yeah, I figured. No, I haven't met all of them. I still just started. And then I had to, like I said, I had to pause because the patch was like 500 gigabytes, apparently. The kisses, though. <laughs> Electric Be making there's out with everybody. Monster chasing you in the water. There's a dead body trampoline. There's a single beautiful bunch of flowers growing in the middle of the torture chamber. The castle is growing skin, and there's a baby <laughs> throwing up into the bum hole of a man. Oh my Speaking god, I remember holes, that. That's what's chasing you in this game. Walking, grunting bum holes. They waddle around looking for you in the darkest depths of the castle, forever wondering how different things would be if they didn't go for that lockjaw surgery. The and amount of thing, times I paused like in Disney this game. Did a live action remake of Pac-Man. So obviously you don't want to be face to face with these mangy old flaps because they look a little intimidating dating and they'll kill you that's another less important thing but for some <laughs> reason our main man daniel is in daniel about being able to defend himself he can pick up everything around him and lob it around like an australian but it doesn't matter <laughs> if you can lift a rock or a sack or a book it won't make a dent on anything around you aside from the environment for some really cool and clever puzzles in its rawest form this is a stealth game the only way out of a sticky spot is to run or hide and hiding won't save you forever because in all of the best hiding places even the shirts are dead you run, you hide, <laughs> you pray they don't spot you. And even better, while hoping they don't spot you, you can't even look at the monster for too long, lest Daniel San wets himself and starts losing his sanity. Essentially, amnesia is a big smelly puss simulator. I know violence isn't <laughs> always the answer, but he's clearly- Okay, I have to admit, even though I'm a giant chicken, in the, like, the first couple of tries I played this game, when it first came out, I have to admit, even I got, like, fucking tired of how- just insane he got if i would even look or glance out of the side of my eyeball at the fucking monster and i'm like even when he was just roaming around in the dark i'm like okay i know it's scary but come on come on even i was getting like just tired of it okay with cutting off limbs in his memories and even drilling holes into heads in the present day so cut this bait of shit out if you can pick up moldy bread you can hit these things with something one thing you don't want to throw anything at though is this nice young man this the trauma. is a gripper. more like a gripper my nads you should find everything in the laboratory another important thing light the trauma. See, if you don't have enough oil trauma. in your lantern or don't have any tinder boxes that you find scattered all over the place to light torches lamps and candles you are stuck in the dark which also ups the difficulty in a different way by making you start hallucinating usually it's just cockroaches on the screen and on the floor and yeah whatever i'll have cockroaches on my face no sweat at school they used to call me jim roach but then it starts <laughs> getting way more obstructive like making you hear noises and voices from all angles around you to make you try and hide from something that isn't there and eventually your vision will turn into how your eyes go after playing guitar hero movement and navigation gets trickier and then you have to consider the light you need light to stay sane but then too much light not only drains your limited resources but also makes you way easier to spot to the monsters so you've got to balance light hiding in the darkness sanity and not looking too long at the enemies while trying to figure out where you're going while trying to find hidden items while trying to solve puzzles while trying to be quick so that you can serve your light but not too quick so that the sprinting alerts it's too much. Wild, it's too much. Bellowing music screeches at you while you're being chased. And when all of the pieces fit together at the right time of night with the right pair of headphones, it's enough to make you... <laughs> By the way, if light is so vital the to fuck? my survival, why can't I just pick up candles? I'm more than okay rubbing against uh, them, and that's fine. No, but you go. It seems really stupid. You're not damn I have you're not. dumb -nil. But don't panic, dumb -nil. everyone. It's okay. I've got a dead rabbit. In Amnesia, you'll Jesus be going Christ. everywhere. The library, the machine room, the prison, the sewers, the Morge Simpson. And like I've said already, <laughs> there are puzzles too, which I not only really enjoyed figuring out, but also make a great bookend to the running and hiding and item finding you'll usually do beforehand. And I love it when my flow is even and stable. It's never as simple as just <laughs> brute forcing your way through areas and avoiding getting caught. You have to be careful, otherwise... Oh no! Oh, what is that? What is that? Don't come near me, you <laughs> munter! I've got a chair! Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh no, it's the boy! Don't come any closer. I'm <laughs> warning you, I have an apple! All right, fine, we'll get McDonald's. Ah, get away from me, you minge! Get away! Don't minge, oh my off. god. I don't like this. Oh, don't well... worry, everybody. It isn't real. I already did it earlier. I need you maybe 13 years old now, but it... Yeah, what's uh, the Brandon Rogers thing? Because I, I saw you, like... I think you mentioned it or posted on Discord or something, maybe, if I'm remembering right. But I'm so behind on everything, so. 
It has held up super well. Everything it does okay, complements okay. each other and blends into a gourmet sorbet. And I can totally see why at the time it went viral a and why for my sorbet. YouTube feed back in the day, it kickstarted a new dawn of horror game playthroughs. It also has raw meat, but Agrippa doesn't need that. Well, that was the start of the video, wasn't it? But to spoil the rest of it for a second, every other game I'm going to look at for this video will also be in first person, just like Amnesia. I think its influence had a chokehold on indie horror games for a good chunk of time. But surely, there was another viral horror game that wasn't in first person, right? Well, I don't know. Let's consult the... Well... <laughs> Board. Tell I think he pronounced it just right, honestly. Is there another viral horror game that isn't in first person? <laughs> <laughs> Not the first person. No. The Luigi yes. board. <laughs> that game was You May Nikki, another <laughs> viral sensation that was actually made in 2004, but I didn't see it get much attention until the same time around Amnesia came out. It's a top down RPG maker game about a girl who doesn't want to go outside and touch grass, so decides to stay in and play Fortnite. <laughs> oh, no, Wait, don't touch to the grass. This? I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> go on then, let's have it off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I just laid my monthly sponsorship egg. I oh my god, inside. here we go. What could it be? Oh my god. What the fuck? Oh. It's empty. Hello, I'm Spons. And the last time I <laughs> shouted at you with blood all over me, it was when I was birthed by Caddy's stomach while talking about Genshin Impact. Well, the makers of that game are back with a space fantasy RPG of course, called Honkai of course. Star Rail. Honkai is what happens when I look too close to the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> And it's also a free-to-play turn-based <laughs> space adventure where you explore different worlds in a semi-open universe as a trailblazer and search for treasure, solve puzzles, unravel many side stories, and get lost in the luscious animations and music. Along with it being super easy to pick up and play like a baby. Oh. However, it can get very tactical with everything around you becoming part of the battles like the environment and character positioning. It's extremely good fun and more than just waiting around for health bars to drop. But don't take my word for you it. You gotta the collect got all the waifus, the, the husbandos. Months, which is at least more than nine a day. The game is available now on PS5 with data sync across PC and mobile phones. So jump on in and experience the version 1.4 update where you'll find two new maps in the planet Bellabog and witness the comeback Bellabog? of Seal, my favorite Space Seal. <laughs> You'll even get 10 free or go Star Rail trying, yep. passes for logging into the game for seven days, which you can then use to try and draw for the two new limited time five star heroes, Jing Liu and Topaz the Fire Huntress with her pet Nummy, which is exactly like my hand after I've slept on it. Use the link in the description <laughs> below to get the game now and experience all of the unique 20 plus characters on their space quest. And use the redemption codes below to redeem 50 It's easy if you don't jade, pull for I just have one Stellar Jade when you can have 50. Hmm. <laughs> It's cold out here. I want to go back in the egg. Where's my mum chicken? I'm not sure, Spots. Mum chicken? Maybe she'll be in Yum Nikki. Let's find out. In this game, you go to bed and end up in your own dream world where you have to collect random objects hidden behind every dream door and then equip them to use a toilet. This isn't a traditional gay. Mm, in any sense, there's no real goal, rhyme, or reason to what's Phoenix, going on or oh why God. things happen the way they do. It's more of a trippy sightseeing tour that you need to find the entrances to. And I know that doesn't sound too interesting, but let me tell you, the sights that you see can get a little bit... You wouldn't think they would get as much mileage as they do with the pixel art graphics, but trust me, they do. Some of the things you encounter and the backgrounds you find are some of the most twisted, freakish things I've ever seen in a game. It can be slow and a little boring to explore the empty spaces, solve the mazes, and find these things, believe me, I know. But I would say it's worth sticking through to see what might happen next. Oh no, I'm in a cavity. How do I get out of this warm situation? <gasps> are you telling me I can walk through a cavity as a flintstone? Are you telling me I can walk through a cavity as a severed 
head. Are you telling me I can walk through a cavity as a lamp? Yes, you can. It's your life, kid. Stay in bed. Skip school. Wear <laughs> sandals. Eat a crisp. <laughs> Go nuts. This is where the horror, Ooh, if you want to call crazy. it. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> I have to admit, like, out of all, like, the scary games I've forced myself to play, um, that... The ones that have creeped me out the most, I have to admit, are usually games like this. Like, usually indie horror. Um, Because as scary as, like, some FPS, first person... Not FPS. First person horror games are. Um, usually the indie ones, for some reason, they just creep me out more. They just do. Of course someone made sexy fan art. Of the monsters in this game. Of course. There's always going to be sexy fan art of anything and everything. If something exists, there's sexy fan art of it. <laughs> that comes in with you, May Nikki. It's not about tension or danger or scary punishments for not being God. It's entirely down to its thick, dripping, sloppy atmosphere and how far you're willing to push yourself into uncomfortable territory to see something deformed and frightening. Like walking into a Walmart. And the music in no, particular the does its part way too well, despite it not matching the, the mood of the game at all. It. It's surprisingly funky oh, and God. jazzy, and yet somehow it works so well. Every track in this game slaps. Just listen to this. <laughs> then you're suddenly running away from a chicken woman. That's then how you you're jam. suddenly lost yeah. in laps direct. Then you're suddenly following my cousin Leg. Then you're suddenly forcing these ugly bell ends to cough up blood. Hey, Marky, why did you and your girlfriend split up? Because she wouldn't give me head. <laughs> oh <laughs> oh you my god. My advice, though, get the bicycle as soon as humanly possible. I don't remember where I got it from. You can figure it out. But it makes getting around some of the more empty and open areas much less of a chore. Plus, you don't need to listen to the lady's footsteps ruining the mood. <laughs> Nah, using the bike makes it all ten times better. <laughs> How did they record the sounds that come out of my parents' room? Hey, hey, look at this. I have a kniff. Wouldn't it be funny if I went up to one of these things and stabbed it? Wouldn't that be so effing effed up? Okay, I didn't expect that to happen. I was joking. I only thought you could- Oh my god, it's another human! Hello, dream friend. You have a lovely room here, and I just so happen to be taking everything that doesn't belong to me, so I hope you don't mind if I mooch around and- Ah! Well- What are you? What is you? What is it? What? Oh Christ, I can't get out now. What do I do? What do I do? Maybe what do I it's- do? Uh, I could trauma. stab him with the knife. I'll teach him. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> you made Nikki is one of the most unique experiences I've ever had. Not an absolute favorite of mine. I personally can't be okay with the amount of times you have to wonk yourself That's left it, and right through lots of thin Hulk diagonal up. passages in a game with only four direction buttons, but I can definitely see the cult appeal it's garnered. It might have been viral for only a blip, and yes, it's not the kind of game you play if you want to go... Okay. <laughs> you know what? It's an unforgettable ride. It's very creative, the music rocks, it's somehow relaxing yet unnerving at the same time. That it was, was made a by one guy. It's recreation of old, and it's all the videos Steve. that what came out at the same time. If you wanted to do anything else, I'm sure it could warm up your Halloween ham. But why was he shirtless? Because. When the wind blows the Trauma. For the fans. <laughs> It's a combination of money and trauma. And everything. <laughs> uh, can you believe it, different race, baby? Who could adorable. that be at the door? So adorable. <laughs> oh, of course. Look, everybody. It's Samuel Locomotive Jackson. I just came off the set of the latest Nick Steamy movie to what? tell you about another the scary game all about some fuck. stairs. Samuel, that doesn't sound very scary at all. It is to me. I can't get up them. All right, I'll <laughs> download it. Bye. Next up is another <laughs> viral hit from back in the day, SCP-087. If I'm not mistaken, the first ever video game based off of the fictional online wiki series, the SCP Foundation. And that's all very nice, but where the hell did I put this program God, on I my have desktop? To... Oh, God, I remember first when I heard first uh, heard about SCP. Like, in some of the lore videos I've watched, I haven't watched everything, because, you know, I get creeped out easily. But just hearing some of, like, the background lore and shit, 
it just actually freaks me out because a part of my brain is thinking you know this could actually be fucking real and i'm like shh don't think about it don't think about it don't think about it uh, fucking scp oh yeah guy. there it is i forgot that i keep it next to funny stinky monkey challenge game <laughs> of course Is it Alan Wake? SCP-087, according to I the SCP have no wiki, idea, is a but seemingly that endless that would staircase actually make in sense. blackness <laughs> in a small building in the middle of nowhere that might have someone or something living in it, and nobody ever comes out once they go down it. Sign me up. A simple premise <laughs> and an extremely simple execution. You are a poor, unfortunate test subject being sent down the potentially bottomless darkness of SCP-087, and all you can do at the threat of gunpoint behind you is keep walking down and report what's happening, or, if possible, find out where the bottom is. And look, I know, stairs are only scary if you see Prince Andrew walking up them, but don't let oh, the simplistic God. nature fool you. There is evil in these stairs, and it will mess with you throughout the entire game, throwing hallucinations at you that might be glitches in the game, or actual danger, distracting you with sounds of crying and footsteps that aren't your own, and forcing you to keep on trucking forward as the floor numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, all right, I think I'm going to go back up. Oh, Don't wait you a second. Those stairs, bro. Oh dear, I can't. Bro. I'm on a segue. I suppose then I have no choice but to keep going down. But you can't stop me from having fun while doing it. Whee! <laughs> Ooh, Hang on, maybe I'm not on a segue. This is a pogo stick. Why do oh I have God. the ability to jump this high when there's nothing to jump on? Are you gonna get on the railing? Yes, yes, I can! Right, now I'm gonna <laughs> slip myself down the center of the stairs and hit the bottom in seconds flat. Oh, wait. Damn. I have pie. <laughs> so over the years, I've heard a few people complain about this game being boring, and I think I get why. It's extremely accurate to the source material, and it's injecting me directly with anxiety like nothing else. But after a while, nothing happens for so long that you start wondering what the point is. A game like this needs a delicate balance, because if you don't have that balance, then that can make the difference between a tan and a hate crime. Come on, <laughs> I'm in the 50 floors now. I've gone down over 100 that fucking picture. stairs, and still nothing is going on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You know, I love going downstairs backwards. The best thing about this game, <laughs> though, before it even starts, in the settings menu, for some reason in the control screen, there are three fire buttons. Why? All you do is walk and look around. I would love to go mental with a glock down here. I think that would solve all our problems. Yeah. And they made another <laughs> SCP-087 game, but this time it was in a corridor. Let's be real though, corridors are even less yeah, scary than stairs. Yeah. You aren't gonna wake up in the middle of the night and see a corridor creep into your room. Excuse me, do you have any fish oil tablets? Oh, what a lovely surprise. Honestly, I'm gonna be Look, honest. everyone. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the creepiest part about what the stairs and shit is literally the anticipation for me. Like, thinking something's gonna happen and then just waiting for it to happen. But then it doesn't for the longest time that fucked me up the monster at the end <laughs> was actually kind of goofy and less scary than that it's my uncle arthritis <laughs> don't mind me i'm not staying long i just wanted to raise awareness of my condition and show you a game that they made all about people like me ha isn't charity wonderful i'm gonna download it right now <laughs> Should watch her I thought you weren't oh, staying yeah. long. I'm trying to leave. Oh, sorry. Wait, you weren't even gonna say goodbye? Ah, uh, yes, where are my manners? <laughs> That's what I sound like later. when I first get up. Like I'm defrosting. SCP-173 is a sculpture oh my that is God, I unable fucking to move remember this one. living thing keeps eye contact with it. But if you so much as look away for a millisecond or even blink, it uses those small frames of darkness to move closer and closer to you until it can grab yeah, your see, neck Yeah, see, this just reminded me... It, it just reminded me of those fucking, um... Statued angels or whatever from the Doctor Who show. That's where my mind went. Eight out of ten. Service was great. 
and now I'm dead. This creature is the main antagonist and subject behind the exceedingly popular SCP Containment Weeping Breach angels, from 2012, made by the same person were behind angels, the stairwell but... and the corridor, and it went beyond viral even for the time. The success of it went so far past what the creator expected that they were able to keep updating it for years after it first came out, adding more items to it, more monsters chasing you around, more obstacles to get around, and now we're at a point where the original first draft of the game that initially went viral is still out there to download. But I want to see more stuff, Daddy. So off I go into the latest available version, and good lord in Christ in God in bloody, they have added so many more things to it that to me, the game is nearly unrecognizable aside from the intro sequence, the main menu, and a couple of rooms that I remember all too well from the early viral YouTube days. The story here is that my name is Bint, and you're a poor old <laughs> sod being forced to go and clean SCP-173's chamber from all of the body liquid and the bottom liquid. And while you're in the room with two other people taking it in turns to blink, the door gets stuck, the lights go out, and e Okay, so that Lovely. was my name's fault. I am now rum and coke. So now this <laughs> thing is out, and it's not only after you, but after everybody else in the facility, including security detail that were keeping locked up other various SCP monsters with their own unique quirks and methods of hating you or killing you, or both often at the same time. And to make it all even worse, Lovely. today was pizza day. Not pizza day. Ooh, Ugly. SCP's fucking up pizza you day. Don't you? Oh, and by the way, you <laughs> also have a blink meter. Yes, you have to blink in this game. So you need to manage your blink timing with the space bar or just forget about it and let it happen naturally. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to admit right now, when I first started seeing this shit going viral, I didn't even bother with it. I was like, nope, nope. I literally watched a couple people play like the first part. I said, you know what? I don't need to play this. I'm not going to, and I don't want to. I would prefer not to have a heart attack. So I didn't. And I'm all the happier for it. So that- <laughs> Containment Breach is very similar <laughs> to Amnesia, but with way more aggressive monsters, even more obtuse solutions to some of the puzzles, and oh a much God, more a open world design to the point of you not <laughs> oh knowing God. if you're heading in the right direction to get out or not until you realize you don't have the equipment you need yet. And I know that sounds annoying, but you're so distracted by every other thing in the building coming after you that it honestly doesn't matter. You'll be close to figuring out what you need to do, got your inventory cleaned up, got the right key card created, remember the route back you need to take, and then- Oh no, it's the Spees, it's the Spees! Where do I the even speed. begin? Okay, right. So there's 173, of course, the main threat that follows you more or less everywhere throughout the game. Then there's 106, the old man that materializes slowly from the floor. Oh, I hate that walls, guy. I hate that speed. Dimension where the only way out is to solve his labyrinth. Like I watched, I watched um, a lore video about that one, and it freaked me the fuck out. I don't like it. I don't want it. Get it away from me. Then there's 096, the total opposite of 173, where if you look at him for too long, he will lose his shit and then hunt you down in seconds. There's 049, who wants to kill you with his touch and then zombify you as bait for the other security guards. There's a chair in the break room that I jumped on top of and got stuck on and I couldn't get away from it until I quit the game and reset it. There's 012, <laughs> which plays a song so intoxicatingly alluring Can't even trust that you the can chairs. barely keep from walking away from it. There's 966, who are near invisible skinny coat hangers that wait for their moment to silently take you down. There's 939, who are pack-based predators yeah. that mimic the sounds of other humans in the game to lure you towards them and then attack you. And my favorite, 714, a green ring that makes you tired. <laughs> Why is this here? But all of those that I mentioned aren't even the yeah, half. Yeah, really, I don't need a ring for that. Me is that this game makes me panic like nothing else, and I'm not a keyboard and mouse guy. So when I panic, I forget what my fingers do, and then I end up just, you know, I, I, I can't. I try, but I, I can't think. I can't. I do, but I just, I try. But I just don't <laughs> like it. Okay. And that makes moments like this really shit me up because I'm always expecting death around every. <gasps> <sighs> don't worry, everyone. It's just my hazmat suit that I put there. Myself. Okay, so I flipped the power <laughs> on, I've redirected it to the elevators. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to them now. And... Oh, no way, you walk out of <laughs> elevators like that too? I thought I was the only one. Really shit me up, <laughs> uh, the British, yeah. Are you looking for hot Russian singles in your area? <laughs> 
containment bricks, especially for a <laughs> free game, is top tier for first-person horror. Give it a look whenever you can, but I will be honest here, I am convinced that on more than one occasion, 173 oh, cheated no, did you give me. I snapped my neck Phoenix? so many times to this nubby bastard with an egg box for a face, and most of the time, I don't think I did anything wrong. Look at this. Look at this. Come on, man. Leave me alone. Why did that count? How is it fair that I walk into a room and die instantly? What's next? That I take a look over here and... <laughs> Phew. Well, at least I'm safe down here. And even better, my arch nemesis Wayne Knight won't ever find me. Oh, you know, I think I'm done with scary games for the rest of my life. I'm only going to play nice things from now on, aren't I, Sonic.jpg? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, I guess I'm trapped here now, cursed <laughs> to play scary games forever and not yep, anything yep. else. Isn't that convenient for the video? So in that case, might as well move on to the next thing. Im Scarred. In this game, you walk I'm around scared. a world that's absolutely terrifying because it looks all old graphics. You look for keys to open doors and eventually notice that some very strange things are happening. <laughs> and you aren't sure why that is or what's going on until you notice this broken meringue. Then you pick up a heart on the floor that somehow looks like that and then suddenly... I think my heart just stopped. The fucking potato. <laughs> After that first major jump, though, the game actually crashes back to your desktop, and only then does it start becoming something truly special. You see, every time you open the actual application and then get to a certain point in the game, it will eventually close itself, and then you'll find the entity within the game has actually added files to yeah, your I computer don't remember. and is communicating with you outside the game. Images. I don't remember actually watching anybody play this, but I do remember hearing about it. Like, it looks kind of familiar. But I don't remember ever actually watching anybody play it. Is text files. That's it. And that would already be a little bit freaky, but then within the text files and images are even more information about the story of the game and even solutions to puzzles, which then after you load the game back up again, will then start in a totally different location, only if you've read all of this stuff beforehand, yeah, and then it will ask you to solve the puzzle Phoenix. regarding the text file that you just opened. By the way, that entity is called Whiteface, and I suppose after all these years, we had it coming. I don't think that <laughs> I'm scared as a video game is anything that horrifying, but the way it talks to you outside of itself and essentially hijacks your PC with a virus that needs to be worked that with in order me, to keep Omi. it going makes it one of the coolest damn games I think I've ever played. And the chasing around gameplay is just a bonus as you try and avoid this lad telling you why the best movie ever made is White Chicks. As an entire experience, <laughs> if the creator wanted to make a game that actually felt haunted and that you personally shouldn't keep playing or else Benjamin will come after you, then it's as close to perfect as it needs to be. You aren't reading a ghost story about a game. You are the ghost story. You are living it as you play it. And I'm not easily spooked, but this game gave me the biggest scare of of all the games in this video by having the game crash and actually have Google Chrome already open looking at a web page of Whiteface and while I was taking a quick break to admire how clever that was, the game decided to <laughs> No, for real though Yeah, for real, like if I did this shit especially by myself, I know for a fact I would be dead on the floor, like just just comatose, I would no no. Literally, instantly, I would shit out my ghost self, alright? Instantly. Scares crashing, not have closing and reopening, making files on your desktop, shitting in your shoes, opening web browsers and screaming at you, starting up by <laughs> itself and Whiteface showing you his latest minstrel show. The ghost eventually makes you hang yourself, the game crashes, and it never starts up again. We did it, everyone. We killed PC gaming. In conclusion, <laughs> I'm Scared is a game about a man with heavy shoes. Heavy shoes. Slender man. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. I love it. This game was everywhere. You yeah, it was fucking everywhere. And I did play this one. And I actually got... Uh, uh, I actually got... What was it? I think I got up to five of the pages. But I never, I never got all eight. I never got all eight. But I got close, all right? And considering it's me, I'm lucky I got one page. Let alone five. I think it was five. It's been fucking forever, but... I, so many people were playing this fucking game. Could not escape it. And now I'm bringing it back again because I hate you. Slender came out in 2012 and is based on the infamous something awful forum fictional monster Slenderman. A gangly, long limbed Slenderman. creature with tentacles, no face, a dapper suit, and a nasty habit of teleporting around and stalking, then kidnapping children to take them yeah, back to his Marble private Hornets island. You are. Marble I Hornets. have no Marble. idea. And you are in oh! forest because. Sorry, I keep pausing, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want to like talk over him talking. Um, I remember when Marble Hornets first came out. I watched, I think I remember watching like at least the first like ten videos. Like this was back when it first came out. I watched the first ten videos, but then I never went back to it. I never finished it. Maybe that's something we can do in the future. If I can. Like, um, unless I'm immediately copyrighted. Because didn't they get, like... I remember hearing news about them actually having, like, DVD sets of that shit and everything. I just never went back to watching it, though. I have no idea. And you need to collect eight pages scattered around the forest because Slenderman wrote down all of his passwords for his 4chan and Ashley Madison account. Rookie error, man. As you start <laughs> finding more and more pages, Slenderman becomes incrementally more aggressive with stalking and chasing you. And as soon as you find the first page, he even begins banging a drum to let you know he's on the pull. <laughs> Look, I really don't know the point to any of this. I don't know why we're here, what we're doing this for, why the pages are important, and why Slenderman gets increasingly more upset with you for taking them. You just have to accept it. As much as you have to accept that the game itself isn't that goo. With a silent... You just walk forward, <laughs> pray that the pages have spawned in locations you can easily find, turn around whenever you see Slend, and then whenever the screen goes a bit staticky, that means Slenderman is close by, so just keep moving in another direction. Follow these steps, and eventually you'll just win. It's only a matter of time. Sorry, I mean it's only a matter of patience, because... Oh, this is the slowest piece of dump I've ever seen rolling I down do a hill. Remember that. I see them like, a lot. I, I hate look at the slow... As much as it scared the shit out of me, because again... Chicken. I am chicken when it comes to horror games. It it was so fucking frustrating at the same time. Because I just wanted to get through the game. But you literally move slower than a fucking snail. Like you can't you got no vroom vroom in them legs. Rolling dump factory. There is absolutely no reason why you should move this slow. My grandma moves quicker than this, and she's <laughs> dead. What makes it worse, though, course, is sprinting, because course. you do go a little bit faster, but because of some terrible motor development skills in childhood, your man can't move faster while holding his only source of light in front of him. And that light doesn't affect the game in any way. It just makes you able to, you know, see. Do you want to walk slowly into something or sprint slowly into nothing? This game has so many choices. There's at least... Three? The pages aren't even that hard to find anyway because they all spawn in specific landmarks that we all recognize from our local forests. Like the popular forest shower rooms with no toilets and a sad chair. Or the popular <laughs> forest gas chair. canisters. Or the popular singular wiggling tree. Or the popular forest tubes with nothing in them. Or the popular giant rusty forest cylinders. Or my favorite, the world famous landmark of the perfectly aligned identical rows of giant sausages. And by the way, for such an abhorrent <laughs> psychological story, Talking, kidnapping menace, Slend doesn't ever show up. Instead of playing the game itself, I prefer to play Find the Thing the Game is Named After, because that in itself is much harder than actually finding the eight pages. Whenever static begins happening, I deliberately looked around and he just isn't there. And whenever I turned a corner after grabbing six pages, which is when he's supposed to be popping up all over the place, he's never there. Follows? Does he? That's news to me. Always watches, <laughs> no eyes? Actually, that adds up. I can't find him because he has no eyes to see where the hell he's going. Help me? 
From what? Even if he does catch you, he just looks at you and the game ends. Leave me alone? Well, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. He left me alone hours ago. I wonder if there's a page <laughs> that describes exactly how I'm feeling right now. Oh, here it is. No, 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 no. Oh, God, go! Move it, Grampy! Why are you so slow, you corpse? And why do you deliberately it's blind of yourself drama. every time you move a little bit faster? In fact, how are you even sliding along so smoothly? Are you a pensioner that got lost at 10 p.m. on his way to the co-op? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna keep I love the fact they actually like recorded that shit in the middle of the fucking night. Halfway up the screen to see, it's the best I can. Well. Ow. I can't even look at this <laughs> like, oh, well, Slenderman looks a lot like the trees. So yeah. Your mind plays tricks on you because you That's what I was thinking because I remember. You confuse it with a tree. He doesn't even look I remember uh, getting jumped all the fucking time by Slender. Slender Boo over here. Um, I don't know if they've updated it a lot since then because it's been years. Or if there's been any changes that would cause that. Uh. But I actually do remember, like, I, 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 my ass would get slendered so many times that I actually stopped getting scared at one point. Because it was just like, okay, fuck off. I think that's one of the reasons I stopped at five. I didn't want to try again. Come on, YouTube. I literally- YouTube. YouTube's been fucking with me today. And I don't know why. On his own. That's not an interdimensional stalker. It's a guy who missed the bus and is watching it leave. And when you eventually <laughs> do see him, he doesn't do anything scary either. He just stands there and does nothing like a child at Disneyland too nervous to say hello to Goofy. And by the way, for a free thinking. game and yeah. being made by one person, yeah. everything else in this game looks alright. So why is it that the main threat that the game is named after the worst looking part of it? Why is he like this? <laughs> Oh, my shit hit the bed. Oh, and on my first attempt to finish in the game, see how I died. Everything was cool, no static, no following around, no nothing. I grabbed a page and then. <laughs> yeah, that was fair, wasn't it? Now you start from the beginning and very slowly slide around looking for pages all over again. And then that on my sweet, second sweet attempt, slender the exact same thing happened. He just looks at you. <laughs> I found this scary 10 years ago. You know what, though? I shouldn't laugh because whenever you chuckle, it makes you a cuckle. And trust me, you don't want to be cucked by Slendy. Man. Wow. That's just the first that... proper slump of the video. <clears throat> that really progressed the uh, wind out of my wind. Little, uh, Please, weirdly. can somebody okay. walk through that door and give me something to. Oh! Look, everyone, it's my good okay. friend, the Bouncy can... Castle. <laughs> He's a very old castle. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can... Maybe if I lower the thing. Jesus Christ, okay. Let's try 480, I guess. I don't know. Let's see if that helps any been around for years. He was built in 1986. <laughs> oh, Bouncy Castle, I can always count on you for good video game recommendations. That was my foot. Thank you so much, Bouncy Castle. I'm sure that I'll enjoy- Yeah, true, Phoenix. It's one of those games- Slendered the arrival. Well, in the last game, he didn't arrive at all, so I'm excited. The story <laughs> is that after an area yeah. hiker failed to report back into Park Staff, it's definitely one of those games you Slender had to the play Arrival when it was basically the original Slender again uh, from the same people brand actually new, but now with a budget and during which a means certain better time controls, period better presentation an actual story different scenarios and things to avoid and a proper beginning and ending with set pieces and you can tell those higher production values from the very start you can now sprint while holding your torch up and for a small team <laughs> of indie devs back in 2013 the game does look really good. I'm not sure about your man's stance while walking around with his camera glued onto his face for no reason, but it's okay. It's okay. It's automatically <laughs> better just from. <gasps> Ooh. 
Oh, no. There he is. The man himself. Slender the Leaving. This is nowhere near <laughs> as slow as the original game. Good God. But this is where I will actually praise the original over this version. Yes, it's stupid and cheap that I died twice because the game just decided I lost. But at the very least, there was tension in the fact that the game could just randomly be over. But here, that never happens. And Slend is even less threatening than he ever was before. He's a yeah, I never, aggressive I never tried to play in this around, one. But all you do whenever you see him is walk the opposite direction every single time. And you will never get caught. Slenderman is now the meth addict that you avoid by crossing the street. He isn't even remotely unsettling. It's like you're riding a skateboard and he's a curb. You see him, you go around him. You see him, you go the other way. You see him, you go the other way. He's a long, gangly pothole. And I'm getting <laughs> sick of looking at all these pages. What Not is Slender it about the Why do you get so livid when people take them? Are you a novelist? Did you lose the only draft copy of your latest book, I Have No Eyes, But Why Can't I Get a Service Dog? Luckily though, Slender nice. isn't the nice. only thing to run away from like a little bitch there's also the scariest thing of all a child that can't do makeup <laughs> don't worry though because that as is the scary game says, wow you can focus your torchlight to blind them don't worry though because as the game I don't says think the flashlight i'm a smelly old liar don't get me wrong it's still spooky though because in this part you have to deal with the asbo child and slenderman at the same time but even though that is true he comes out so infrequently that he might as well deliver your presence <laughs> nice don't you love it when you come in from the cold and your house is more rumbly than the wind? And later on, you move on from a delinquent oh, yes, child and end up running away from Boney M. <laughs> oh, look, Slendy's also there. Better turn around and go the other way because otherwise... Oh, oh, right, I'm dead now. Well, at least I know what I did wrong. And I will learn from my mistakes that I made. There's a bit here when you're in a storage <laughs> tunnel under a farm and there's things in it, but none of them do anything to you. They just appear so... Yay. Look, I know it must seem like I'm skimming over you a lot, but I promise you I'm not, drawings. because most of the time oh, it's just okay. an expanded version of what we had before. You collect pages here, then you turn on generators here, then you close windows here until you get vacuumed out of the bedroom, just because it that's, looks that's a lot really better doesn't make about. it any the more The Slender Man Games was originally trying to tell you, you're the monster in the end, okay? You're the horror game. It's you all along. <laughs> for me. And again, Slendy Tubbies doesn't do anything scary or even appear that much to mean anything. Even the trees pop up more than he does. <laughs> yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> You're always the monster. Oh, yes, mother. At least I can praise the game for teaching Same. environmentally conscious practices We're all like monsters conserving here. power. Even when our main character Boogie gets Boogie. knocked unconscious and dragged to a totally different location by an extraterrestrial beast, he still remembered to stop recording and turn his camera off, ready to carry on the next morning. Oh Jesus, the forest is on fire. The forest is on fire. How do I get out? I can't see anything. Not now, Slend. I'm trying to get out of a burning <laughs> forest. I don't have time to wonder how you dress yourself so well without being able to see the wardrobe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he is, can't go that way now, but don't worry, just like every other encounter, you I love, Yeah, I love how <laughs> in this part it kind of feels like Slenderman is more of just like a slight annoyance while you're trying to escape like a real life threat. <laughs> like <laughs> you're just trying to get out of this forest that's on fire, and Slenderman's like, Hey, how you doing? You wanna hear about <laughs> you wanna hear about the good book? <laughs> it's like not now, Slenderman. Not now. <laughs> uh Slenderman is also a kid stiller, so the pages might be bait. I mean God damn it, Slenderman. Turn around, wait a second or two, and then go back where you were before. Slenderman is a scrawny barrier that always stands in the way of exactly where you need to go, and all you need to do is despawn him so you can finally cross. Oh leave me alone, you inconvenient egg! In fact, and this <laughs> is not a joke, the scariest part of the game for me was when I looked on this shed and saw that Oakside Park had three canoes available for rental. <laughs> Nothing else like this happened at any other point in the game, and I have no idea what triggered it. I guess because they look so similar, Slenderman's wife cheated on him with a canoe. Then after that, the <laughs> second scariest bit of the game Not was when the I picked canoe. up this note, and I was convinced for a second the game was reading my mind. You know yeah, I didn't I'm remember curious. Phoenix. Do you think like, if Slenderman so ate too many ago. donuts, then you'd have to call him Portly Man? Portly Man. When a stroke from boredom strikes, the damage spreads <laughs> like a fire in the brain. When you spot any one of these signs, think and act fast. Not the face. Image. Is their face falling asleep? <laughs> Ass. Are they scratching it? Sitting. Are they doing that? 
Time. If you think <laughs> that you see any of these symptoms, it's time to close the game and play something else. Outlast contains intense Here violence, we go. Gore, Fucking Outlast. graphic <laughs> content, and strong language. <laughs> Please enjoy. Thank <laughs> you, content. <laughs> Not him over here flirting with Outlast. <laughs> I like you. Here it is. <laughs> a face that launched a thousand 2013 clickbaits. You are miles per hour and you are a rough <laughs> and tough alpha chad journalist getting down and dirty with the inside scoop right from the source with your latest report taking you to an asylum called Mount Massive. Okay, I did play the first Outlast. I don't... I can't remember if I actually ever beat it, but I did get pretty far. I remember that. Um... This had like a, more than a couple of jump scares that got me, but mostly it was just annoying because I had no idea where I was supposed to go half the time. Because <laughs> you know me, it's like if I'm not scared out of my mind, I'm getting lost. So... <laughs> <sighs> and I did... I remember trying to play two, but I didn't get very far in that one. I don't think... It didn't really it didn't really catch my attention as much as one did. Come on, YouTube, you can do it. You can do it. You can also call it lump large. And once inside, lump you have to large. uncover the cruelty unleashed on the patients, expose the inhumane practices of the doctors and scientists, and avoid contamination by washing your hands before you can have your large willy meal with a diet coke. The game is kind of the Gotta same have as the that others. Willy no breakfast. way to attack, running around in first person looking for items, conserving your light source, hiding from enemies, but this time you can lean. <laughs> And to give it credit, it Ooh, might still be a little leaning. silly that Miles is walking around with a camera up to his eye like in Slender the Arrival, but at least there's a better purpose for it. Not only is he recording and documenting all of the horrors within the asylum, but he also uses the night vision mode in the camera to see in the dark, which you will need to use a lot because holy shit, this is a dark game. In Outlast, if you run out of night vision batteries, that's it. Enjoy the sensation of closing your eyes, but without the pesky step of closing them. <laughs> Don't oh fret. my god. There's batteries all over the damn hospital that just so happen to fit your camcorder's hole, and you'll need to look around for as many as you can because these batteries drain faster than me with cola! Drink it! Oh Christ, okay! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I can't do that. I, I wanted to do that. I can't do oh Oh, uh, I would love it though if a battery company actually sponsored this game because what better advertising could they need than Duracell? They'll go for 10 minutes, probably. Shortly after the game probably. starts and you get used to being the world's first parkour news reporter, you then get to a part in the game where they outright tell you to hide. So right, this is where the game game actually begins. And shortly yeah, after- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I was 90% of the time in a fucking locker or hiding under a bed or something. I was like, I can hide in this game? Sign me the fuck up. I will sit here for a good 10, 15 minutes just hiding. Waiting. <laughs> oh. You too. the first big boy, you're then thrown into your first encounter room, which is where you notice how every sub room has a table that you can run around, and there lies every problem I have with this game. The second you realize how every set piece and encounter room is designed with loops in nearly every room, aside from a couple of dead ends, Bob the and game weave. quickly Bob stops becoming weave. about crawling around and hiding, and more about running laps around these mingers while they follow you around wherever you decided to get behind. I find Outlast to be one yeah, of the... Yeah, it's kind of... I love how Outlast compared to the... Slender Man, the original one anyway, because I didn't play the Arrival one, but I love how in Slender Man you could barely walk, but in Outlast you are encouraged to fucking sprint your ass off. You are getting those steps in. It wants you to do the cardio. Least scary horror games for that exact reason. Does that make Outlast bad? Not at all. I think it's great fun. It's a good old blood pumping, jumpy, runny nose. But I treat it more like <laughs> Mirror's Edge than Amnesia, which I don't think they were trying to go for, considering, you know, soup. Ah, ah, ah! Sorry, mate. Give me a second. I gotta put more batteries in. There we go. Ah, ah! 
Not to mention, once you start hey, getting chased around the by the Johnson Welcome. twins and then find out that this hulking man Goomba is called Chris Walker, a lot of the horror loses its gusto. This wretched brute is called Chris Walker. Would you be scared if you were chased by a monster called Tony Smith? And as for the prawn twins <laughs> over Smith, here, one okay. looks like a spud and the other looks like a coconut with hair. The only time I think the game figured out to go full on with the tongue-in-cheek nature of what's actually happening around you was when you run into Dr. Roast Beef, who greets you by offering you to leave while you're tied to a chair and then cuts your fingers off. <laughs> And the jump scares are yeah, so that part, frequent and over the top that they become that more part like shots where of you get your fingers cut off. That actually kind of shocked me because I had never really played a game at that point in time, especially a horror game where you're actually full on mutilated in the game and it affects your player. Like I thought that was cool and horrifying of adrenaline to keep you playing the game rather than make you turn it off from being a piss baby and some of them are so predictable it actually physically hurts me <laughs> ow i was physically hurt to its credit though <laughs> when it does catch you off guard it really catches you off guard Okay, bye. I'll tell you what it Just is. Want the game feels very mechanical. It feels exploitable in a way that Amnesia or SCP Containment Breach don't feel. Oh, I see you. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. Oh, shit. Where'd you go? You disappeared. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm gonna go bowling. Sure, the run-around looping strategy doesn't work all the time, and you'll take a few hits or slices or maybe even a bum, but you will always get not out without bum. dying, and that does make it fun, but to me, not very scary. <laughs> Look, mate, if you're gonna die, at least don't die hanging on top of a half-open door. By the way, what point is Miles trying to prove by staying here? He's there to find out if anything bad is happening. He sees it within the first five minutes, catches it on camera, and then doesn't go home. Is an impaled security <laughs> guard not enough for your BBC investigates? You don't need any more than this. Just make like a leaf and go away like a leaf. The footage might be usable anyway, not with all the don't times you shove the goes. mic all the way up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you're all wondering, what is actually going on inside this guy's head while he's having his fingers removed and injected with hallucinogens? How to make Traeger juice. Step one. Squeeze. <laughs> Radio. So good, it's gravy. And then there's the story, the which... Uh, look, I really like the twisted experiments angle with this asylum cult that formed out of nowhere. I like cult stuff. It's creepy. Casual cultist, fall to winter 2023. Get oh your account God. today. You don't want to be this guy, do you? Don't get left behind. Stay on trend with our brand new puffy jacket. But along this half of the story <laughs> is another half about a paranormal ghost creature that invisibly kills people. And I know that it is linked into the cult, but it just doesn't fit with, well... That. It's like two different stories are flipping back and forth between each other whenever it suits it. One second it's graphic body horror in a grounded and grimy dilapidated asylum, and the next second it's row row raggy. And that leads to the final portions of the game and then the ending, which man nah, I don't like it. It makes me want to crap my own arm out. I've changed my mind, I don't want this. By the way, this supernatural entity causing godlike destruction, it's called the Wall Rider. That's not a demon, it's a Tony Hawk trick. I will say though, <laughs> if I Tony were Hawk. to ever lose my head, I would sit exactly like this. O -E -O -R -R -O -E -O -E -R. Video games are fun, aren't they? I don't, I don't they? think that's how... I don't uh -oh, think that's I forgot how it goes. I have a family. How are you doing, kids? That's weird. They sound a lot thinner than usual. <laughs> Are they stiff? Should I call someone? I should call someone. Daddy, turn on the heating! I'm cold to the bone! <laughs> ah, my boy! Five Nights at Freddy's. I haven't heard of this one. Yes, it has all led up to this. I've heard me? of this you one. You saw it coming. The single most viral game, not just of this video, but probably ever, which just so happened to be a horror game from 2014. It's the one with that meme in it. You know the one, that meme. On three, that one, one meme. Two. Exactly.
Was that the bike of 87? <laughs> Nerf King Bowser <laughs> guy who repurposed another game he made that was supposed to be for children but ended up being more suitable for adults. Oh, you saw the movie? I haven't seen it, a game that was supposed to be for adults but ended up being more suitable for children. One of the most unique and brilliant concepts ever. You are a security guard looking after a family fast food restaurant where the animatronic characters have gone wrong and they're out to rip off your breeds. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you all know about it, so it's redundant me going into any more depth about it. But all I will say is this. Yeah, I did try to uh, play the first one, but I kind of gave up like pretty quickly on it. <laughs> I just did not get into these games. I know they were like fucking popular everywhere, but I just I could not get into them. I just couldn't. I tried with the first one, but that was it. Yes, without question, this is the scariest game in this video so far because this was the first thing I saw on the Steam page. Then it got even scarier when I started the game because while worrying about all of the animatronics tearing my head off, the screen itself was already tearing its own head off, so I had to quit and then force V-Sync on every FNAF game I downloaded. You are the security guard of a family fast food party restaurant, just like Chuck E. Cheese, but this one is called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Shit. You're on the night shift <laughs> from midnight to 6am for five nights straight, and luckily for you, during those exact hours, the animatronics have the zoomies, but with more teeth. And by the way, you can't move. All you can do to keep yourself safe is check the security cameras all around the restaurant to keep track of their positions, turn on side lights to see if Peter Rabbit is hanging out there, or shut the doors to stop them from coming in if he is. So why don't you just keep the doors closed forever? Because Freddy Fazbear is the chairman of Just Stop Oil and he doesn't want you wasting all your power. You need to balance and prioritize everything you do to manage your power consumption while keeping yourself alive. But if you don't use enough power to keep your eye on things, then your punishment is... <laughs> The same applies if you use too much power as well, except the difference is that Frederick Yeah, that's the one, one of the things, one of the reasons why I couldn't really get into it. Like, usually I try to play a horror game if it looks interesting enough, but I don't know. When I tried to play the first one, it literally just felt like a jump scare simulator instead of a proper horror game. I don't know. It... <sighs> It kind of reminded me of uh, when it became popular to have those apps on the phone to where you'd be like doing a maze or something, doing a puzzle or something, and then it'll be fucking jump scare out of nowhere. That's what it kind of felt like to me. The lore. The lore. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> the map pet. Oh, my God, yummy. <sighs> Trauma. Trauma. Here's the thing about this game, though. I don't get it. Like, I don't dislike it, but this was it? Really? This is the game that took 2014 YouTube G words off to the moon in views? I will admit, I love the concept <laughs> and the simplicity of the execution, along with the designs of the animatronics themselves. They aren't horrifying, but they are very uncanny. At least they aren't a bag of crisps in a tie. But actually sitting down and playing FNAF honestly makes me feel like I'm working, which I, I know is what you're doing, but all it boils down to is quickly switching through the cameras, putting them down, checking the lights, closing or opening the doors if you need to, and then repeating the cycle. Am I missing anything here? I got into a cashier's trance playing this game because it's just you repeating the same menial asinine task in a specific order and doing it slightly quicker on the next night. Five Nights at Freddy's is like working at a cash register until your boss yells at you in a fursuit. The jumps did startle me, I won't lie, but like that's all it is. I get startled every time my granddad falls out the window, but you just carry on with your day. It was a surprise. It's not terror to your absolute core. I feel absolutely <laughs> no tension yeah. playing this. It's too repetitious and daydreamy for me to fully get into it. And all of this is for a paycheck of 120 smacking lips. <laughs> your poor it's man about how really much you make now. For money? He doesn't need to go through it's this. All the so future. I help him. Five Nights at Freddy's Security. My guy. 120 a month. How can I get you up? 
alone. Why can't no, we alone. move? Why no. do we come back for more after night one? Why can't we save power by turning this fan off? Why are there huge heavy metal doors in my room that stop all four members of E17 from getting in, but nothing similar built into their room to stop them from getting out? Why are the animatronics better security for the building than I am? Why don't we bring a torch with us? Why don't we have a candle? And why does Chica always look like... <laughs> So the game spread like bird flu. It was everywhere. It was unavoidable. And just like bird flu, they made a sequel. Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> 2 Pig in the City came out three months after the original. That how sounds many, promising, doesn't it? And when you play how it, many you can FNAF understand how. FNAF games are FNAF there, actually? in many ways is just FNAF 1 again, but with ten times more shit to worry about. I don't like calling them FNAF. I'm gonna call them fans. You're still stuck in the middle fans. of a building and you're still checking cameras, but now there's three times the threats coming after you at different times, three times the amount of rules each of them work with, Is that three the official times the number? amount of things you need to interact with on your mouse, and three times the amount of times you'll end up dead because of it. On night three, I got less than 45 seconds in and I lost. The dude on the phone hadn't even finished speaking to me and it was over. And that's if you don't keep on slipping up yeah, with your mouse. Else. I can't count the amount of times I just Five wanted to of them come out of the security of a few cameras months? and put on Jesus my Freddy Christ. mask immediately to fool whoever was in the room with me, but then buggering up the mouse movement to do that. You've got to go down to the bottom of the screen and then up again and then down to another bit. It's just silly. There's not enough actual button presses for the insane amount of new actions to perform here. Everything is done with the mouse, except the flashlight, which... Good evening. So yeah, you'll be looking around your room to check if there's no one dip. nearby, and then sliding the mouse to the bottom right to open the cameras, and then sliding the mouse over to each camera to check them, then sliding over to the new music box that needs to be kept wound up or else you lose your face, then sliding the mouse back down to where it came from to put the cameras back down, then move the mouse back up over in an arc to slide down to the other side of the screen to stick the Freddy mask on, all of which needs to be performed within less than a second to keep alive, especially in the later nights, while you're coping with all the same stuff you have to go through in the original fan, including managing power. Power, but now just at the flashlight, which is vital to see who is hiding where, but also scare away some of the animatronics before they come up in front of you, because now you have no doors anymore. Why can't we use more of the keyboard, Frank? I can't keep up with this. I need to focus. Can somebody make me a flat wire? Also, that was another thing during that that time period where it was like a lot of the scary shit. If there was a flashlight or a light involved somehow, you always had to worry about the battery or whatever running out. And that simultaneously annoyed me and made me extremely anxious but mostly annoying they have books what the f of course they do of course what am i saying close enough i don't know Everything how anyone can actually be days. scared of playing this when there's too much multitasking going on i'm too distracted to worry about foxybingo.com and i've got to use the flashlight but only in bursts because the battery doesn't last long at all so that means most of your game time is spent looking at the other end of your parents camera when they've forgotten Very to turn true, the flash yummy. off Very i eventually true. did beat the game i wanted to see if i got anything out of the experience that other people do but i just don't fanf 2 as a uh, whole package just makes me feel like cookbook yummy what the fuck <laughs> yep 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 trauma the ultimate problem for me in fanf 2 is that i don't either find it scary or fun it's a chore for me from start to end there's too much going on too many places to mess up with limited controls too many flashes you end up making 20 dollars less than the first game and chica is now thick oh well at least we have some <laughs> cutscenes this time that's she always got some nice <laughs> It's super basic food it's and me mario it's shocker let's go come on children <laughs> wow i felt like i watched the mario movie and then four months later they made another <laughs> why are there so many of them and why did they come out so quick? It hasn't even been a year. What about my birthday? So I didn't massively <laughs> get the first game, but I still liked it enough. I didn't massively get the second game and didn't like it anywhere near as much. And the third game is now the one that I actively do not like whatsoever. I couldn't stand Fad 3. As a whole package, it just makes me feel like... Drama. <laughs>
I think this game is outright bad. Yeah, I'll say it. I don't care. What's gonna happen? A load of kids gonna come after me? I could win a fight against a kid. No sweat. So it's mostly <laughs> the same deal as the last two games. Security guard, super glued onto a chair, checking cameras, and stopping an old boiler from coming into your room. But it's a lot different. For starters, there's only one animatronic, spring trap, and you don't have to worry about power levels or battery life anymore. But to compensate for that reasonable change, they decided to make everything else you need to survive completely random. The camera feeds that you need to see what's coming, the audio system that you need to lure things away from you, and the very oxygen that you breathe to exist can break down whenever oh, it wants to. You're not in a building, you're in a PS3. And everything <laughs> in the system crashing every so often isn't in and of itself a bad idea since you have unlimited power. They have to tip the scale somehow after all. But whenever you go over to the console needed to reboot the systems that fail, not only do they take three years to restart, but while they restart, you can't do anything else. Let's say your audio system breaks down, but your camera system and ventilation is fine. That doesn't matter. Once you start rebooting the audio system, you're stuck on this screen until it is done, meaning you can't go back and check the cameras or seal the vents shut to stop Springtrap from grabbing you, all because your giggling child button doesn't work. This is just and giving me if one a system headache. is rebooting and another one breaks during that, you can't start rebooting that one until the other one is already fixed, meaning double the time spent on the panel screen, meaning double the chances that Springtrap will kill you. Or yeah, I feel like I would have been ha doing it. Ooh, I would have had to actually get paid lots later of money night, in order to do this work. Way more often, way too quickly, meaning you have to rely on complete People system have the reboots for more frequently, what which the takes fuck? even longer, of course. and will 70% of the time be an end to your game. Should you be able to leave this screen while things are restarting? Is my copy bugged? Because no matter what I clicked or where I moved the mouse, I couldn't get out of this screen, and I just don't understand the gameplay reason why it would work like this. But, Caddy, I hear me asking myself, <laughs> there's only one monster, so isn't it already easier? I'm glad you asked me, and no, it isn't, because at other points, which again feels totally random, you'll see a hallucination from other games that, doesn't that are surprise better, me, Phoenix. and Fan 3 gets so self-conscious about it Sadly. that it decides to break nearly everything at once, forcing you into the same reboot panel again, and punishing you for not doing anything whatsoever. What are you, a nun? Most of it, Fan <laughs> 3, is just you sitting back, powerless, unable to do anything, and just wishing really, really hard that Roger Rabbit doesn't show up. <laughs> Save your baby! With for 1 and 2, I didn't love them, but I at least finished all five yeah. nights. But here, I didn't pass night three. I just could not be bothered and I could not care any less. God, it's the, annoying. The more you guys are mentioning, the less, is a nephew you hate the less I want to play this You series. tell me that this game is good or scary. I dare you. You look me dead in the eye and... Oh, wait, sorry. It's hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, and you tell me this game is good or scary. It's neither. It's made for people that think Eclair stands for Electronic Clair. At this point, I'm I understand why, Phoenix. I understand why. I do have a theory that I haven't seen anyone mention on the internet before. Bedtime. 6 a.m. I think they take place inside Big Ben. Playing this game feels like being a child, pooing yourself, then your parents grabbing your head and rubbing your face in it. I'm not learning anything, I'm not having fun, and now I smell. All topped off in the end by a casual lean from Fruity Springtrap. And then they made a fourth one. The next game we're looking at is a unique case, not only because it's a scary game to play, but also because it's scary in and of itself, since it doesn't technically exist anywhere, and today, you can't legally get it anymore. <laughs> but don't worry, I do have it, because I'm great, and it is stored very securely on my original 10-year-old PS4 from 2013. <sighs> Oh my god. The problem is though, it's been so long, I don't have the power cable for it anymore. Can somebody- Don't worry, Caddy, I'll help you out. <laughs> oh, oh god. Wow. Look everybody, it's my best friend, I Keith remember uh, fucking PT, oh my god, when they first announced they were literally taking it off and you weren't even able to- play it anymore if you hadn't already downloaded it i remember the amount of playstation 4s that were on fucking ebay being sold for like thousands like four thousand more like it got fucking ridiculous ridiculous <laughs> it was too good they needed to kill it yeah 
pretty much. They like they hit that backspace so quick, so quick, but no one forgot. Uh Oh, I heard someone there were like people were trying to recreate it. Like I know uh not too long after they took PT off and everybody was selling their PlayStation 4s on eBay that there was like a person or a group of people that were recreating it for PC. Yeah. Yeah, Yomi. A good game. Gotta kill it. Not allowed. Not in this economy. For a PS4 power cable, is that right? Yes, Keith. I just don't know what I did with it. Last time I used it, I was using it to power my w washing... What's it called? Oh, don't worry about <laughs> that. I'm pretty sure I have one down in here somewhere. Wait a second. Yeah, the Silent Hills drama. Oh, lovely. Look at the. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Here you go, Sprout. I've got a cable. I've got a cable. What the f- what the you fuck? You don't have a cable. My cable's wet. This is PUT, the 2014 hour-long <laughs> free demo downloadable for your PS4. Oh yeah, I heard something about their- Before being removed by Konami entirely just eight months later. I remember, uh, uh, the other day I watched like a short little video that kind of explained it. Like, the latest Silent Hill quote unquote game, if you want to call it that, is like a mini series apparently where it's like episodic and a bunch of people will go on one and put votes on what's supposed to happen or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't get the whole thing, but it just, it just sounded like a cash grab because it has like a battle pass thing with it too. It just, it sounds vote now on your phone yeah it just it sounds fucking stupid and it's so disappointing because they've already ruined most of their ips okay can you at least have one comeback <laughs> can you at least do one comeback right <laughs> just just hold it in hold in the microtransactions and the battle passes and shit just hold it in for at least one one comeback. <laughs> it's all we're asking. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bad. It's bad, Konami. Later, after falling out like with you, the game's you main said. director, Big Boss. It can't be searched, it can't be downloaded, and it can't even be pirated unless you count the many remakes in recent times. So I must stress, unless it's on some underground emulator that I couldn't find anything about out in time for this video, PT isn't on PC, it's on PS4. The only way you are playing this game is on a physical PS4 that just so happens to have PT downloaded onto it. And that alone is scary than the game itself. I thought someone recreated it for PC. Unless it got taken down okay, or something. I'll call it a draw. This game is scary, man, and I can't even explain exactly why it is. It's just one of the most chilling, tense, and disgusting experiences I've ever had, and I've tried to sleep with a woman. PT is a game <laughs> about waking up on the floor. <laughs> You see a door, <laughs> walk through it, and yeah, essentially that's I feel it. Bad you about are trapped in an Metal endless Gear loop of well, the same L-shaped corridor in a house, and it's left up to you I to might notice not what changes, how the environment it, reacts to you performing certain actions, damn, and hoping that the next damn. loop advances the story along by you doing what you think was right. Oh yeah, and you've got to do all of this while being stalked and hunted down by that. <laughs> This Lovely. ghost is Pete, named after the game, and she isn't the most aggressive enemy we've seen in any of today's games She's so called far, but is trauma. absolutely the creepiest. You know that feeling when you're in a dimly lit house on a rainy night and you always think that this time there'll be something around the corner? Well, she is that thing around the corner, that feeling manifested. She's always there, Didn't somewhere, they screw up and if the you can't recent see one? her, you'll sure as hell hear her instead. 
the Metal Gear Solid, like there was a collection that came out and That's it's just, it's shit. Come across a multitude of nightmare gas like this fetus keeling over and dying in a sink. Saw some people saying just to emulate them. like a donkey. Then there's this festering bloody fridge hanging from the ceiling. Then there's picture frames with a million twitching eyes. And then there's a bag of shit that does nothing at first, but then eventually starts talking to you. I could do nothing but walk. Oh, the donkey baby also starts talking too, but we don't need the to do more of it. The donkey baby. Okay. Like That's trauma, Drew. What gets me, though, is how uncomfortably realistic the whole world is. It will age gradually worse as time passes, I'm sure. But for an original PS4 title nine years ago, it does not screw around with how violently real everything feels, while at the same time not feeling real even slightly. And yeah, the game's puzzles have been criticized for being way too cryptic and a little bit, well, terrible. But what's great is that even if you have a walkthrough by your side, there's so many variables at work for which scares happen at what moments that you don't actually ruin the experience. Yeah, I think it's they're just going for a cash grab, Phoenix. hellish. You can even trigger new scares on repeat playthroughs that you missed before in case you really love wet pants. Ah, stop it. I don't like it when you do that petite. I can't handle this, man. It's so dark. I know she's there, but I don't know when she'll pop out. And the noises, please stop making the noises. Ooh, ee, ah. I've got an idea. I'll cut my finger off so I can't press any buttons and then don't have to play anymore. Ah! Oh, well, that was easy. Now I can keep playing the game because the button for that finger isn't needed anyway. Oh, and you well. know that scare? You know, the one, the most famous scare in the whole game on all of those YouTube thumbnails? Well, sometimes it happens all 15 of the thumbnails. minutes in. All of them. And other times, it doesn't happen at all. Trauma. And it does half an hour later. Trauma! There's very little rules or concrete patterns to Pete, and you'll find that multiple walkthroughs will tell you different things. It's just that kind of game, and I'm loving it, like Donald's muck. But the real tragedy of the whole thing is the fact that it was removed from retail, even though it was free, and will probably never be available in its original state ever again. Isn't that a PT? He did not. Oh my god. <laughs> and even more depressing is that the lucky few who solved all of the puzzles that involved taking 10 steps forward and then speaking through a USB microphone to a baby then revealed that PT <laughs> actually stood for playable teaser for Silent Hill. So, but now PT is gone, the project was scrapped, it'll never happen, and we got a game about a mailman instead. All thanks to the publisher <laughs> Konami, who did all of this because they made the very brave choice of deciding that they didn't have enough people hating them. Konami is just... Oh it, no, they're on to me. It's really just... The Konami policemen. Altogether, they're literally setting their asses like on ARG fire. Creepypasta about a haunted game on a haunted And then wondered why there's smoke. But actually in real life. And now that I have it forever grafted onto my PS4 and I'm never going to delete it, you know, I could sell it... But no, this is my PT machine. I own a significant piece of modern gaming history here. It's a privilege I still have it, and I'm not giving that up to anybody. I'm still not over how much they were selling those fucking PS4s. Seeing as I only <laughs> use this system to play this single game on it too, you could also say that makes this the single most expensive game that I own. But the funny thing is, no it isn't. I don't like being American. Far too... doughy. What? <laughs> oh God! Is someone there? Ah, no! It's SCP-087. Oh, for fuck's sake! Help! He's going to kill me! Well. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. Oh my God. We gotta stay tuned, you guys. We gotta stay tuned. We stay for the doggo. The puppy. Look at the puppy. Stan. Teeth are bones that live outside. Well. And that's on trauma. Ha 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 ha.